Good morning and happy Sabbath. And welcome to our Sabbath school program. I want to thank Maureen for always stepping in to, well, pretty much do everything we need. She'll play, she'll lead out if somebody's away, she'll teach the lesson, and I just, I really appreciate you every day. But I just wanted you to know today. So we have beautiful sunshine outside. Yesterday was so beautiful. So um, I decided uh, to, well, my timeline just got decided that I would skip the gym. I normally try to be at the gym around five and uh, I haven't been sleeping well this week for no reason in particular other than just age and things on my mind. So I, I, I set my alarm for 4.45 and I rarely sleep through it, but I slept right through it, didn't get up till 5.30, so I thought, you know. It's beautiful out. I'm just going to take my dogs for a walk. So I lassoed up my two giant beasts that are about 15 pounds. And, and, uh, and uh, we went out for a walk. And it was so beautiful. And so we walked and we walked. And I ended up in places that I hadn't even really explored before. And I just thought, it's so beautiful when we, we sort of receive the call. And I just felt like I needed some time in my thoughts, and I listened to an amazing sermon. And I just, I, I really appreciate it when God, he, he almost knew what I needed before I even needed it. Isn't that interesting? So anyways, I just, it was a real blessing to me, and that's kind of the theme for our, our mission story today is blessing others. And so I hope that uh, today's Sabbath, not just, the Sabbath school service, but our Serpentine um, seminar program, but also just the rest of, of, of abiding in him, spending time with him, and enjoying his presence that we feel more, I think, more acutely on his, his holy day. So if we could just um, open with a word of prayer, and then we'll have a, a couple songs, and then we'll get into our, our mission story. Father, we are so grateful to you for being able to call you father and that you want us to not just be aware of how holy you are and how far above us but also how loving you are so let us lean into this love today let it permeate every every aspect of our our, our lives and our souls and make it our mission to show that love to others I want to thank you for everyone that is gathered here today, everyone that's coming or watching online, that you will draw close to them, lean into them as they lean into you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, my lovely sister, Benita, she asked that we sing song 324 to start. So if we could just open our hymnals. And Marco, you're cutting this, right?
Beautiful. Um, does anybody else have a favorite? Could you say again, Laura? Three, two, seven. Three, two, seven. And just a couple pages over. Wonderful. Three, two, seven. Wait for it. Oh, yes. Pastor Gray, it's so nice to see you. We're just doing a quick little song service, and I know it's without notice, but do you have a favorite that we could close our singing portion of Sabbath school with? I have a suggestion. I'm really compelled about a big weekend come together and just have a moment with our heart and pray. Sure. Let's do that. It'll give Pastor Gray a few more minutes to yes, find yes. his favorite song. I'd like to invite everyone. If you can come closer here, let's come in the front. Let's can you get the microphone back? Yes, yes. Certainly. Sure, sure. Don't be shy. Come on. Let's come on and spend time really in prayer together. Uh, this, uh, this weekend has been such a blessing. To me personally, I don't know about you, with the Serpentine uh, Prophecy Seminar, and uh, it has been such inspiring for me personally. There's a lot of things that I didn't know that helped me to become a better believer, a better Christian. And I encourage all of us, does this church, our church, will become a place of prayer. Can you say amen on that? Amen. Because 
We will not grow as believers without prayer. Amen. Christ spent much of his time in prayer. Yeah. He cried on your behalf and my behalf. He spent a lot of time in prayer. And that's what I would like to encourage all of us. Amen. That we need to pray more than we have never prayed before. Amen. And some of those prayer can be a singing, it can be reading a scripture text, it can be contemplating on something deep to your heart that can draw us close to Christ. And then he can draw closer to us. So I would like to invite if there's anyone who would like to volunteer to pray. We we'll spend a few minutes just if you're able to kneel. Uh, you can kneel with me. And anybody would like to pray? Please go for it. I can give a prayer. I'd like to pray in Jesus' name that everybody is blessed with acceptance. Everybody is blessed with God's care and giving. I'd like to pray that we each are blessed with a garden and a den so we could have love for one another. Amen. Um, a dame. An event, Adam and Eve, and then we could have a Garden of Eden, so everybody could prosper and eat and maintain health. Amen. 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 Precious loving Father, we come to to thee, O oh Lord, again this beautiful sunny day, the Sabbath day. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that we receive from you. Well, since last Sabbath, yes. you preserve our life, O oh Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for this uh, privilege to worship you in this uh, beautiful day, O oh Lord. Basically, <coughs> we pray in the name of Jesus for our blessings for our seminar that is going on and that your presence and your Holy Spirit always will with us, O oh Lord, and especially I pray for those people who have come to attend, O oh Lord, and may your Holy Spirit touch their heart, O oh Lord, that they will realize that uh, what's happening in this world and that you're coming soon. Father, please forgive us if ever we have sinned against thee, O oh Lord, and so that our supplications will be accepted to you, O oh Lord. Please bless this seminar, and that we will come again tonight, and that on Sunday night, O oh Lord, and with the lead of uh, Pastor Bolstra and Pastor Como uh, in the in Chelwa, O oh Lord, bless them. Thank you, O oh Lord, for everything we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our oh, Heavenly Father, we come before this beautiful Sabbath morning to thank you for all your blessings, Amen. for everything you have done for us, and uh, we thank you even for the tribulations and trials that we have in our lives. We know that you want us to refine us and. Uh, Please make us to understand that we are living in the, such a solemn time and end time. Well, we need to be ready. The storm is coming and uh, help us that we may be prepared spiritually, physically, and that we may be empowered with the Holy Spirit that we may be able to go and to spread the good news of salvation. There are so many people that they need to know you and we need to finish the work that you may soon come and Amen. take us home. Amen. Please continue to be with us and uh, be with uh, the people that they are in uh, different struggles, uh, people that they are sick. Please Amen. heal them, touch them, and heal them. And the people that they are suffering with different reasons, uh, especially people now they are in war. Father, please uh, comfort each one of them and make each one to understand that the only hope is in you. Amen. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. A holy and gracious and compassionate and merciful God, we come before you this morning. 
We left our bed and we are here, Lord, to worship you. You have said in your word, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and confess their sin, you say you will hear from heaven and bless them and heal them and transform them and revive them. Oh, Father, this morning we confess our sin to you. That, Lord, you will be merciful to us and that you will forgive us of our sin. And the blessing from above will overflow in this place. And this place will be flooded with your blessings. And many men and women, boys and girls, will feel that they have been with Jesus. And when we are out there, Lord, we will reflect your character. I pray for Brian. I pray for Chris. I pray for Lee. I pray for many others, Lord, who have stepped for the first time in our gymnasium to attend the Serpentine Prophecy Seminar. Lord, many of them have appreciated, have gotten the message. Lord, continue to work in their life. Continue to convict them, Lord, that they will continue to seek and they will find you. I want to pray actually for two Michelle from last night. Lord, you know them. These are your daughters, Lord. And the other Michelle too. There are three Michelle actually. And Father, I present them before you. That walk with them. Convict their heart. They, that they will have a desire. A need to know more. And that they will surrender to you, Lord. And we will say it was good to be in the presence of God. We surrender to you, Lord. Thank you for blessing us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So thank you so much, Pastor, for suggesting that. Um, there's, there's nothing more powerful than humble servants on their knee before the great God who, who despite what sometimes seems is no longer in control, he still is. So Pastor Gray, do you have your favorite? 185.
close our singing portion. We've got uh, a lot of people here. I just want to give them a special welcome. Um, my special friend, Wally. I want to say happy Sabbath and thank you for coming. And, <laughs> and to everybody else, um, we, I, I want to give um, Stephen enough time for the lesson, but I have two quick things to, to get through here. Um, the uh, mission story, our, our mission this quarter continues on the Southern African India Ocean Division. And uh, this is a story about a young girl named Blessings. My name is Blessing, and my life is evidence of God's bountiful blessings. My family went to a church every Sunday in Zimbabwe, but we were not devout. As a teen, I wanted to serve God, and I told a church leader that I wanted to be celibate for Christ. Well, do you have a boyfriend, he asked. No, I replied. Well, you should taste love first and then come back. So I went away and I tasted love and I stopped attending church for good. In college, I made the wrong friends. We drank, we went to parties. And when I was 18, I fell in love with a 21-year-old man. We tasted love just like the church leader had suggested and I got pregnant. In my culture, if you get pregnant, you have to stay with that man. So I moved in with him and his mother. Then I realized that things were not what I expected. Neither my husband or I worked, and we were always fighting. We had two children, and we kept on fighting. I didn't know the meaning of marriage. We both had our own dreams and hopes, and his mother seemed to be unkind all the time. I began attending my husband's church on Sundays, and then I felt ill. I fell ill and went to my mother's house for an extended period. At my mother's house, I had two unusual by, but identical dreams, three days apart. And in both dreams, I heard sirens wailing and saw people running in all directions. I also saw a large stone coming down from heaven and an arrow pointing to a cross where several people were standing. And I heard a voice say, repent for the world is coming to an end. I was so confused. My husband church never spoke about the world coming to an end and I had no idea what the dreams meant. My husband also didn't understand the dreams, but I told him, I'm going to search for Jesus. And when I find him, I'm going to preach about him. But where would I find Jesus? Jobs were scarce in Zimbabwe, and my husband and I moved to Botswana to look for work. While there, we met a Seventh-day Adventist elder who offered us Bible studies. At the first Bible study, the elder told us that the world will be coming to an end and that Jesus is coming soon. He showed us texts from the Bible to support this. Finally... I understood my dream, and I was so happy. Through additional Bible studies, I found the Jesus of the Bible, and I got baptized and joined the Adventist Church, and I was determined to follow my conviction to preach about Jesus. I had found him, and now I wanted to share my love for him and others. I decided to study at Rusangu University, an Adventist school in Zambia. Unfortunately, my husband left me and our two children to marry another woman, but I worked hard cleaning many, many yards and raising enough money to pay for the first few months of studies. My mother helped me out as well. At the university, they allowed me to join its work program to help pay for subsequent months. I decided to study theology to learn more about God and to prepare to teach other young people that they have. They can have the same hope that I have, no matter the poor decisions we make in life. God's always ready to give us a second chance. He is eager to reveal himself to us, and he wants his people to find him and to preach about him to others. Just like the voice in my dreams, he is calling us to come, to change course, to turn our lives around, and to follow him. And he is saying, repent, for the world is going to come to an end, and Jesus is coming, and I cannot wait for that day. And the beautiful part about this that speaks to me is I don't think a single one of us can stand here and say, I've never fallen, I've never done things that were completely contrary to what I knew I should be doing, and I am chief among sinners, so um, I just wanted to read the lyrics of a song that really speaks to me, because we do have a God of not just second chances. Sometimes he gives third and fourth and fifth, and he takes the mess of our lives 
and he recreates it to not only be a blessing for us as we learn and we grow, but a blessing for others. So if you're ever feeling that you've just strayed too far and that there's no way back, I assure you there is. As I stand here today, to say the word strayed is an understatement, but here I stand and this is a song that spoke to me in some dark times. It's called Broken Things. If grace was a kingdom, I'd stop at the gate thinking I don't deserve to pass through after all the mistakes that I've made. But I heard a whisper as heaven bent down and said, child, don't you know that the first will be last and the last get a crown? So I'm just a beggar in the presence of a king and I wish I could bring so much more. But if it's true, you use broken things. So here I am, Lord, I'm all yours. The pages of history, they tell me it's true that it's never the perfect. It's always the ones with the scars that you use. It's the rebels and the prodigals. It's the humble and the weak. All the misfits of hero, heroes you choose tell me that there's hope for sinners like me. So I'm just a beggar in the presence of a king, and I wish I could bring so much more. But if it's true, you use broken things. So here I am, Lord, I'm all yours. So grace is a kingdom with gates open wide, and there's a seat at the table just waiting for you. So come on inside. So thank you so much for your attention. And now I give you over into the capable hands of Stephen. And I know you'll all be blessed. Good morning to everybody. I hope we all have a blessed Sabbath. As they say, happy Sabbath. Our lesson this week is on the flood. This is such a profound event that took place that not only did it almost annihilate all the life on earth, but also changed uh, the environment. Judging by the memory verse, I think the writer of this lesson wants us to focus on the, as uh, things were before the flood, they would also be the same before the second coming of Christ. And here is a few photos that kind of depict the building and uh, animals as they went into the flood and uh, the ark. It really amazes me that uh, in their natural state, males, if they are put together, they'll fight. So how did God keep the peace on the ark that the animals were peaceful for almost the entire year? So God really had a big hand in what was happening. So the preparation for the flood not only the building of the ark, but the logistics that went into it, the storing of food, and what about the water? People and animals can live without food for a while, but not without water too long. So it took a real good engineer to furnish the ark with everything that was needed to keep the Noah and his families and uh, creatures alive for the entire year. Now, there is an article I read as far as the environment goes, even scientists 
that do not believe in the biblical account of the flood admit that the oxygen level and possibly the atmospheric pressure were considerably higher in the past. And then they had a study in the Tel Aviv University in Israel that people were subjected to a higher level of oxygen and pressure. And it said that healthy adults can halt and even reverse the aging process of blood cells. So if the oxygen level was higher and atmosphere pressure was higher before the flood, this would kind of account for the long lifespans of people back then. But since the flood, that's all been changed. Because um, higher oxygen level would have kept the vitality of the cells. Now we're subject to all the poisons, radiation that's in the atmosphere, so it's different. Also, repairing the ark, I think when the flood started, the rain descended for 40 days. God's Spirit really had to be hovering over the ark to keep it safe. There is a coal mine in the Crow's Nest Pass. And I was told that when, before they had these uh, motorized locomotives, underground locomotives, they'd use horses to pull the coal carts. And when the horses were young, they'd take them down the shaft in the mine, they'd stay there all their life. And after a month or two, they'd go blind because there wasn't enough light. So if there wasn't enough light coming into the ark, all the animals would have been blinded. So it was really an engineering marvel that it was made so everything could survive in good shape. So what was the necessity for the flood? What was it that God realized he had to do to bring in the flood? They say the flood occurred about 1,656 years after creation. That seems like a long time, but when you realize people lived to 900 years and longer, it's not that long. So from being very good at creation to necessity to destroy most of the people in life, what happened? Why such a profound change? So that Set was still alive when Noah was born. So Lamik died five years before the flood and Methuselah died the year of the flood. So they kind of, Noah had a chance to know his, the patriarchs that were before him. There is a quote from Ellen White It says, the people not desiring to retain God in their knowledge, they soon came to deny the existence, his existence. They adored nature in place of the God of nature. They glorified human genius, worshipped the works of their own hands, and taught their children to bow down to graven images. 
So it's hard to imagine that they could deny the existence of God so soon after the Garden of Eden when they could see the works of God. And this shows the lineage of Cain and of Seth. So as the scriptures say that the descendants of Seth were referred to as the children of God and the descendants of Cain as the children of men. So here in Genesis 4.26 it says, And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. So this is a very good thing. It started way back with Seth's son. So that was for a thou more than a thousand years. Men called upon the name of the Lord. And yet what happened that things got so bad that it was necessary to destroy most life on earth. So here we read in Genesis 6, 2 that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all whom they chose. So this probably explains why things went so bad. The people that called on the name of the Lord, they got mixed up with the sons of men and as we know, Cain did not have a good start in life. He, first thing he did was murder his brother. So probably was a rough bunch, and that spilled over to the line of Seth, and they got so corrupted that violence was so bad on earth that God could see it had to be destroyed. So, as we uh, read the scripture that the conditions that were back then would again be repeated prior to the return of Jesus. So, you probably all remember the verse that speaks that the violence on earth was so bad that their thoughts continually were evil. There was no uh, real hope for them to kind of repent. And we are told that except the days should be shortened before the coming of Christ, no flesh would be saved. Could that have been the same situation in Noah's day, if God would have allowed them to continue just doing what they were doing, that they were, would annihilate themselves and no flesh would have been saved. Go ahead. Stephen, I just thought of something interesting that the lesson brought out is that it says that, um, that I, even I, he says, it almost sounded like God was shocked that it had come to this, where he's he's noting this this condition, and and to me it just when it labels it great wickedness, I don't think we can understand how how deep rooted this is, because mm -hmm. it, it it's not just a specific action or an occasional action. This was their every thought, every 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 part of them was evil continually. And it, it just shows the profound motivation of their heart, and only God is the reader of hearts. So I know that some people struggle with the whole idea of the flood and, and demolishing you know, lives and creatures and everything, but I found that with this, we have to recognize that humanity reached a point of no return, and this was mercy. 
and it was threaded into judgment, and the quote from Ellen White in Patriarchs and Prophets, it says, love no less than justice demanded that God's judgment should put a check on sin. What a merciful God. That's right. He literally um, saves us from ourselves. I often wondered, what if there was no righteous person left on earth? What would have happened? Go ahead, Terry. Okay. I was going to read the scripture you were talking about. It's quite something. It says, and in, in, in those days there were giants in the earth, in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bear, bore children to them. The same, these same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, that every imagination of his thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, and repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man who I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. And you know, I was, I was uh, looking at uh, Walter Weith. Uh He does this amazing um, Bones and Stones, it's called a video, on, Noah's, on the flood in Noah's time. Mm -hmm. And the proof, the amazing proof, it's, it's mind-numbing to see all the proof that's out there of how the rocks were laid down by water, all the fossils, and it, if anybody gets a chance, uh, it's called Bones and Stones, and there's a couple different videos, but he just, uh, and he, he was a man that used to teach evolution, and he brought, brings it out so beautifully how that's the only way it could have been done, mm -hmm. and so it's really something to see. I'm wondering from your picture you had up there, you had um, Noah's Ark, what they call Noah's Ark. And, um, and then on the right side, it looks like a kingdom full of animals and, you know, men and maybe the Garden of Eden. Maybe the big flood was the ships with engines coming to build you know, a kingdom that would take away life, the gardens, you know, God, what God wants. People follow the Ten Commandments. They have gardens where they can eat year round. They have um, families. And maybe the flood was these evil men who come to destroy that and hung Jesus on the, on the cross for wanting you know, his kingdom to stay alive. Right. That's what I often wonder, just with those pictures, mm -hmm. if I'd study them. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Well, even back in the Garden of Eden, <clears throat> there was uh, one scripture that kind of points forward to the coming Messiah that would give us the hope that nobody else would give us. Without that, we would be hopeless. Um, so we're very thankful for that. Is it right to say that for the sake of God's reluctance to destroy a righteous person, namely Noah, that God had given people a second chance? He's seen that Noah was upright and righteous, and God did not want to destroy him. So, is it right to say that because of Noah, God gave him the instructions to build the ark? If there was no righteous person, what would have happened? <laughs> A scary thought. Like the scripture you just mentioned, it grieved God that he made people. Well, that's a very sad thing to read, but that was the best people could do at that time. 
This is something we have to keep in mind, never to grieve our Creator and always do those things that would bring happiness to his heart. So, from the time that Noah entered the ark and his family and the creatures to the time they left was about one year. In the seventh month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. So, while the ark was still floating in the water, it could have had a pipe with a tap below the water line to get water into the ark, but once it rested on the mountains, it was on dry ground. Nobody went out of the ark, so we were able to get the water for everyone without having it stored in the ark. This is something I keep thinking about, how much wisdom went into the building of the ark to keep the people and animals alive so we could be here today. So that speaks a lot about the mercy of our God. Here in the on Tuesday's lesson it says read Genesis eight one. What does it mean that God remembered Noah? Somebody like to read that? Genesis 8, 1, and God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark, and God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged. And I don't think it's, it's like recollection like you and I would, right, where we are in the kitchen, we're cooking, we're like, oh, I left the, I left the faucet on. I think it's mindful. God, the only reason why the ark was even built is that God gave Noah the dimensions Reminds mm -hmm. me of Moses getting the dimensions for the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. But I think that the only reason why the, op the ark stayed afloat was by God's hand. Even mm -hmm. as wonderfully as it was built, it was still only by God's hand that it remained afloat. Mm -hmm. And to mm -hmm. me, the ark is Christ. The only way we're going to remain afloat if, if we are in Christ so the fact that God remembered Noah, I think it was just he was mindful of him. He was always very present. He was, he was so involved in it. And so mm. I, it wasn't that he had ever forgotten. And I, and I love that it said that Noah found grace. It wasn't that Noah earned it. Noah deserved it. Mm -hmm. Noah found it. Right. It, you know, and it was because he had this relationship. It wasn't just laying around and he stumbled on it one day. He had it in response to what God was doing in his life. Like he preached, remember, he preached for 120 years. Right. Like he was invested in this, but it was only by, by God's power. There is a statement that says, that Noah used all his resources, everything he had, he put it into the ark. <laughs> so, but probably this kind of more points towards God's promise to Noah. That he would give him a new start. Like you mentioned, it's not forgetting that Noah was out there bouncing around somewhere in the ark, but that he remembered his covenant to Noah, that he would keep him safe through the flood. So this is a, what the writer seems to suggest is remember is the central theme of the flood, that God did not give up on humanity, but allowed humanity to start over again. So that again speaks volumes for the 
mercy that God has. Here at the bottom of uh, Tuesday's lesson, it gives some scriptures, Genesis 8, 1, 19, 29, Psalm 106, 4. What does the expression, God remembers, mean? What does this truth mean for us now? That is, how has God shown you that he remembers you? So this would take us back to that promise in the Garden of Eden of a Messiah that God remembers us, that he would not leave us without hope, but opens the door that we could enter into eternal life. So this is very touching and very humbling that God would not give up on humanity but gave us this second chance. So we better make good use of the second chance while we're able. Right now there's so many distractions it does not seem important but when the end comes and it's too late then we can imagine the people that were left outside the ark, it wasn't too happy moment for them. So we want to avoid being like them, but be prepared in our hearts and lives that we're acceptable to God. They say that the atmosphere contains 37.5 million billion gallons of water vapor, enough to cover the entire surface of the earth with one inch of water. So we're told that the water was at least 15 cubits above the highest mountain. So where did all that water go? A wind came to remove the water if after a good rain, if you get a warm wind, it dries out the ground very fast, so wind can pick up a lot of water, but where did it go? Maybe some things are not given us to understand, it's still a mystery, because the way the Bible describes things, it was like a canopy of water around the earth before the flood, but now we do not have that. So that's something that we're not really given to understand, at least not at this point. But anyway, after I think 150 days, the water was dried up enough that when the raven and the dove were sent out of the ark um, and the third time the dove was sent out it did not come back so then Noah took some kind of covering off that he could look outside and he noticed that the ground was dry. But still, they did not leave the ark for quite some time. I think almost two months. Well, this could have gave the ground a bit of a chance to start growing vegetation. Animals, when they came out of the ark, would have needed food. There was no vegetation. They would all starve. So God kind of prepared everything for the new start. And then another thing, it's mentioned here that Noah was faithful. He did not try to leave the ark before God commanded him to. So probably one reason was when Noah and his family went into the ark, the Lord shut the door 
behind them. Noah could have not opened the door anyway, probably. So he knew enough to wait patiently. And we got to admire his patience. After an entire year, a person would be a little anxious to get outside again. He was patient and he waited and was blessed for it. Now, the first thing that says Noah did when they did come out of the ark is make an altar and provide a burnt offering unto the Lord, a thank offering that God had seen him safely through the flood and his family and the animals. And it says that God smelt the sweet savor of the sacrifice. That is when uh, he proclaimed that he would never flood the earth again. So, as we see, to please God is a very good thing for us. So, we should try and do that whenever we can. Now, here in Wednesday, it says, read Genesis 8, 20. What did God, what did Noah do first when he went out of the ark and why? Somebody have that scripture, 820? And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Amen. So, I guess Noah knew that the creatures were kind of limited, but still, he took of the beast and the birds and offered the offering. So he wasn't afraid that he had run out of creatures to sacrifice or that they would somehow diminish and not proliferate on earth again. So this speaks of his faith. Okay. Stephen, I just have a question and kind of a comment too. It's that, so he built an ark and he sacrificed. Um, I personally think it was out of gratitude to God for preserving him and, and the animals that he'd obviously been caring for and his family. But I also was curious, do you think that there was maybe a, it was an act of devotion too, where he's basically acknowledging to God that everything is yours anyways. So it's not that he was contributing, okay, these are my animals that I've taken care of and now I'm going to sacrifice. No, I think it was an acknowledgement that this is all yours anyways. I think so. He realized if God was able to see them safely through the flood, he could say, see them safely to regenerate. Yeah, I would like to echo what uh, Sister Jenna just said, that you know, it was not something that he said, oh yeah, you know, this is what I have, God, I'm giving it to you like what we are today. That's why every time that I talk about offering and tithing, most of the time I say, you know, we're not giving it to God. We're not giving it to God. We are recognizing him as the owner and we are returning what belongs to him. Yeah. Our offering and tithe is a recognition of who is the owner. And if we're holding to it, we are not returning it to God, then we become what? We become the owner ourselves. Yeah. That's right. Amen. So we can see that probably once the animals came out of the ark, they didn't just hang around the ark. They, as animals, they want to wander around, wander away. So what food would Noah and his family have? Probably the provisions they had in the ark, they might have had some left, but they needed a new food source. So this is where, according to the writer of this article, before the flood, people did not eat flesh. 
Well, I'm no expert on that, but if that was true, they just were vegetarian, then probably a vegeta vegetation was sparse for a while. Um, I read an article that after two months, all the trees, if they're submerged in water, they'd all die. So probably the smaller vegetation, grass and shrubs would die as well. They were underwater for months. So how did the earth regenerate the vegetation? <laughs> did Noah bring seeds along to start planting? Well, that's another kind of mystery we're not really up on, but anyway, we know that the earth did regenerate the vegetation, the animals. This one thing is kind of unclear to me. When God told them that they could eat anything in the way of animals, this was probably because if God told them only to eat those that were regarded as clean animals, they would have soon exhausted their food source. So. But later we know the distinction was made between clean and unclean. But for a while, it would seem like God gave them the permission to eat just anything they could find that was good for food. So we don't know how bleak the food source was, but probably for a while, it wasn't that plentiful. I think that was the reason God gave them seven of the clean animals so that they could reproduce faster. And those were the animals that were able to be domesticated, the sheep, the goats, the cattle. Mm -hmm. right. And I think once, there were only five people at this point. They were, of course, going to multiply too. But I think it must have, God enabled it to keep pace and on the question of before the flood, I suspect that part of the reason for all the violence and evil before the flood was that they were killing animals and eating them, not maybe. with God's permission. Maybe. And maybe all kinds of animals, and that helped corrupt their nature. But after the flood, God gave them permission, and maybe it was, he didn't mention here clean or unclean, but maybe it was understood maybe. that it was clean animals that they were given permission to eat. Right. Could be. So now we come to that. Oh. Yes, I was just going to add, it was very obvious before the flood that there was clean and unclean. Right. So it wasn't something that was developed later. That, that was in place before. Right. Because it, God said, take seven pairs of clean animals and made a distinction before the flood. Right, right. Yeah. Now we come to the covenant, the sign of the covenant, the rainbow. Every time I look at the rainbow, I always remind myself that God himself looks at the rainbow and He's reminded that he'll never flood the earth again. So we're very thankful that even though he was so grieved in his heart, he gave people a second chance. And we're part of that second chance that we could not grieve him, but maybe please him whenever we can. So we're almost out of time, so if I could just say a little prayer. Dear Lord, we thank Thee for this lesson study that reveals to us the great mercy Thou showed to the human race that 
it was not snuffed out, but thou gave us a second chance. So may we honor thee as we should to bring happiness to thy heart. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of us were blessed by Stephen's leading us this morning? Thank you so much. Um, I'm just, I'm always blown away by how this all took place. And then I try to, I, I think my three pound brain is trying to comprehend the infinite brain. So the stuff we don't understand, it's because we're looking at it through a human lens. We're putting boundaries, we're putting restrictions. We know we forget, so we assume. But one thing I can assure you, and I got from this lesson especially, that God is ever mindful of us. He notes the falling of a sparrow. He notes the blade of grass. And he certainly notes us because he is love. He is love. His nature is love. His law is love. He ever will be. And I, I can't wait to worship him in person and have any of these questions that we might still have answered from the source. So thank you all, and uh, we will proceed into our church service program now. So, and with that, I know you will be blessed from as well.
Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath to all of you. And I'd like to welcome our visitors this morning, and especially our new visitors that will become our, of course, all the visitors can always welcome here and be part of this family here in Chilliwack. Our uh, friends here uh, from uh, the Philippines, two of them, uh, Glenn and Loretto, um, it's their first Sabbath here. They've been here three days. So I praise God for them, for their uh, safe arrived here in, in Canada. And um, welcome, brothers. Welcome to those who are visiting with us this morning. May God bless each one of us as we continue to worship our God this morning. And as we call to worship, let's sing uh, 672 Spirit of the Living God. thing like this goes up to me to come a moment of prayer. Before I can welcome you, let's have a word of prayer. Holy Father, the Spirit of the living, we glorify you, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. As we worship you this morning, may we be blessed by you. May we be moved by you. Thank you. Be in our presence at this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On behalf of the Chilliwack Church, I would like to welcome all of you. Glad that you are here, especially our friends from the Philippines, three days. I can feel that you are having a jet lag because right now in the Philippines, people are sleeping. So don't sleep here. Here we, we are awake during this time. Okay, I try to adjust it, but I would like to say welcome. We are glad that you are here. And all of you who are visiting, friends, we are glad you are here with us, worshiping with us. And those of you who are watching online, Please, next time, join us in person. The weather is so beautiful, and we're glad that you can watch and enjoy online. I want to bring your attention on uh, this weekend has been such a blessing. It started on Thursday, and last night, we are blessed by the Separatine uh, Prophecy Seminar. How many of you were there last night? Can I see your hands? Amen. How many of you were there the, the first night? Can I see your hand? Amen. How was it? You could say it was good to be in the presence of God. Even for me speaking in front of you here, there's few things that I didn't know. You know, he dig deeper into historical background, how spiritualism is devouring our world today. And many of us even can be misled. And so I encourage you to come back tonight at 7 o'clock. Tonight at 7 o'clock and this afternoon, this morning, actually 11 o'clock, we will be playing one of the video and then we'll do some discussion which I will uh, facilitate that. And then next week we will be kind of really digging more deeper into the Word of God using a Bible, some PowerPoint that I have. And invite your friend. It will be again on Thursday, Friday, and Sabbath. These two weekends is going to be full of joy and full of God's blessing. So if you have a friend, it's still it's not too late to invite them. If you have a family member, invite them. And I want you to continue to pray for those who have been coming night after night so God can move us closer to him and that he can come very soon so that we can be home. This work needs to be finished. It cannot be finished only by the pastor. It cannot be finished only by the elders. It has to be finished by each one of you. You can play a big role, whatever that you are able to. You may not be able to preach like me. I may not be able to cook like you. You can cook. I may not be able to smile 
as good as I am, but you can smile probably better than I am. You may have some personality that I don't. Use it for the glory of God. And I trust and believe that God can use each one of us, no matter who we are or what we are, what education background we have, neither we don't have it. God can use any one of us. Can you say amen on that? Amen. And allow yourself to be used by him. May God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. And Maureen, you have some announcements. Okay, I also want to welcome everyone. And it's a pleasure to be here today for all of us on God's Sabbath. We have a couple more announcements. One is an item of business we need to take care of, and that is the transfer of membership of Marie Lind from Chilliwack to 100 Mile. Marie was with us just for a short time, actually a few years ago, and she's now requesting to move her membership to the church in 100 Mile. So could I have a motion to approve this, this change? Okay, there's motions and seconds. Can I have all in favor? to grant Marie's request, and we will let her know that she will now be free to, I'm sure she's been worshiping in 100 Mile for quite a few years already, so now it's official, and we'll let her know. Tomorrow, New You Walking Club is going to meet at 8 o'clock in the morning, and the, the uh, walk is at Chilliwack Community Forest, which I didn't know even existed. I did a little research this morning, and it sounds like a really interesting walk, and um, hopefully maybe I'll even make it on the walk. <laughs> I heard they had a good group last week, oh, yes. lots of people. Yeah. And our, our New Start Health Seminar will resume on May 7 with a presentation on sunlight, and you won't want to miss that if you have been to the first couple of presentations on that. They were excellent. We have a, an announcement of a funeral from Westminster Church. I'm not sure if anyone here knows this lady, but Marjorie Smith has passed away, and we are welcome to join the Westminster Church family as they remember her life, and that is on Sunday, May 1. And good news, our regular Sabbath fellowship lunches will be resumed in May, so starting with May 1st, there will be soup and buns, and uh, potluck fellowship on the third Sabbath. Can we have one next Sabbath, please? You need to check with the deacons and deaconesses, I guess. Okay, if, if, if we have one next week, you'll get an email announcement about that. There you go. Right. So the old schedule will be resumed. That's, that was my main announcement. I think that covers everything for today except birthdays. So the birthdays coming up yet in this month, there are five. One is today, and that is Miat. Is that right? Her birthday's today? Yeah, that's right. Okay, tell her happy birthday for us. She's not here. Lori Trayers is tomorrow. I believe she's actually away celebrating her birthday this weekend with family, and we have Crystal Vander Heide, who lives in Princeton, who visits us occasionally. Um, my stepson-in-law, is that it? No, my stepson, Terrence McLeod, who is living in Quinell, he's still on our list, is on uh, the 26th, and Joanne Sohan on the 30th. So happy birthday to all of those, and a special, do you? Happy birthday, Sarah. How old? Eight. Eight. Awesome. And to Pearl and Cliff, who are not with us today, but their 65th wedding anniversary is coming up tomorrow. So congratulations and best wishes to them. I was also asked to announce that we will not be live streaming the Serpentine Prophecy part of this service because of copyright. So if you're here and you can see it, and you're, you have an exclusive view. OK. Uh, also, if anyone desires to, they can come later. Uh, maybe you can talk to them. OK, thank you, uh, Maureen and Pastor, for the um, announcement. And before we continue on with our song service, 
I'd like to um, um, share this with you. Um, okay, the Bible contains over 100 different names of titles for Christ. Here is a small sample. Son of God, Son of Man, Son of David, Great High Priest, Light of the World, Bread of Life, Lord of Glory, Great Shepherd, Advocate, Morning Star, Hairs of All Things, Lamb of God, True Vine, Line of Tribe of Judah, Alpha and Omega, Chief Cornerstone, Prince of Peace. And I'd like to also uh, have this verse. The Lord, your God in your midst, the Mighty One, will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. So let's, amen, and may God bless each one of us. And uh, let's sing Joy to the World 125 in our hymnal. I picked this song because <laughs> it's a joy to be here and praise the Lord this morning and worship Him. joyful we adore thee.
song number 430, Joy By and By. Please stand as we sing our opening song. team for that joyous song service we had. Shall we kneel together as we have our prayer song and our opening prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we come before you to worship you, to praise you, to adore you, to praise you for your holiness and your goodness and your love to us. Lord, we have no one else to go to but to you. We thank you that you love us, you care for us, and that you've given us a church family, a community to join together to encourage each other to spur us on towards your kingdom. Lord, we thank you this morning that we have this presentation by Sean Boonster. We thank you for his ministry. Thank you for his presentation of the parallel lines of good and evil that have come down through history, of truth and counterfeit that have come down to us, and so many people have trouble telling the difference. We thank you that that he has given us this this message and that it will continue that we can get clearer insight on 
how to tell truth from darkness. Lord, we thank you for our country and the, the freedom and the peace that we have. We think of those in Ukraine where their country is practically destroyed. And we don't know how the church members are doing there, but it must be very difficult. We pray for them, especially on their Sabbath day. Please remember them and be with them. We pray for your presence with us during this service, and we ask you to bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd just like to mention, we had thought that we might not have a children's story this morning, but there are a lot of children here, and the pastor is going to give us a children's story um, following the offering, and we will also do their children's offering as usual. So the offerings this morning are for REACH BC. Uh, this <coughs> REACH is an acronym which the R stands for, if I have it written down here somewhere, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Reach. So the R is for revival and transformation. The E is for education, A, alignment within the churches and within our church programs. C is for community outreach and evangelism, and H, healthy leadership and management. So the things that this includes, in BC, we have about, BC and Yukon, we have over 100 churches, and these churches work together through a conference. And we have special projects that are covered by the REACH offerings, which is this, the, I think it's every third Sabbath of the month. So this money from these offerings goes to education, that is our church schools, Camp Hope, local evangelism, vacation Bible schools, and many of you may get a free, two free magazines, the Canadian Union Messenger and one called Adventist Journey. Those are provided to you free to keep you and help you get be acquainted with the whole Adventist community through these offerings. So that is the offerings for today, aside, along with our tithes. And I know that you may either give here or you may give online. We have that provision through the church website as well. So at this time, we'll have the deacons please rise and we'll pray for our offering. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the blessings that we enjoy. We share in the things that you've given us. We understand that they are not our own, but everything that we have comes from you, belongs to you, is to be used in stewardship for you. And we just pray for the offering that we will return to you today. We ask that it will be blessed and multiplied. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.
Okay, children want to come forward for children's story? Come on, boys and girls, quick, 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 come on, come on, come on, in front here. I got something special here for you, I got a special story. All right, good morning. Good morning, boys and girls. Can I see your big smile? Let me see how big you can smile. Big one. All right, right now, I'm giving you an assignment just quick in a few seconds. I want some of you to go this row, some of you to go this row. I give you five seconds and go around, make sure you smile in every row over here. And see if there's any adults that is cranky, smile at, the, at them, okay? One, two, three, go. Come on, smile. <laughs> smile at them. Come on, look at them and smile. All right, have a sip. Awesome. How many of you like to be around people who are cranky? How many of you like to be cranky all the time? I have a story. This story is called about a million dollars for a smile. You might have heard some of this story before. Okay? One upon a time, there was an old man who lived in a town, and he was lonely. One of his family, his wife passed away, and he was left alone by himself. And he didn't go to church that much. And the story says he was such a wealthy man. Do you guys know what wealthy means? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? He's really rich. He's really rich, yeah. He has quite a lot of money. And so he was lonely every time he walked around the street. People are cranky. People are mean. And then one day he decided to say, you know what? He's going to visit one of the church. And so he went to the church. When he went to that church, there's a children's story that was happening there. And there was this little girl who was high smile can kill you. High smile can draw you crazy. There's no way you cannot smile at that girl. All the time she walked around, she's just smiling. She's blowing like spring. How many of you love springtime? So many flowers. So many birds are singing. Everyone become lively in the springtime, boys and girls, because in the wintertime, oh my goodness, it looks like everything is all dead. There's quietness. People are all indoors. But when it comes spring, oh my goodness. You know, I live close here. During this uh, wintertime, I could not hear any children noise. But as soon as spring is here, oh my goodness, they're playing around, right? They're having so much fun. And so this man came to the church, and this girl was so smiling, and she was, you know, enjoying. This man who was so cranky, he started smiling too. And you know, this man was so rich. And you know, when you are a little older, or even not older, that's what they call a will. Do you guys know what a will is? A will is like uh, an adult, they write something down. When something happened to me, when I died, I want my money to go to my children, to the church, or to somebody. And you know what happened? This man, after he finished church, he went home, and he pulled his will, and he wrote the name of this girl on it, that when I die, this girl need to get a portion of my money. And because he's getting part of my money, it will be a million dollars because of a smile. Now, how many of you would like to smile for a million dollars? <laughs> all of us here yeah, are laughing because they want all a million dollars. Yeah. Right? So, boys and girls, you are such a flower. You are a treasure to a parent, to a doll's. When you smile, I'm telling you, make dad and mom so happy. Make grandpa even better. So I encourage you to smile. Because Jesus said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I, I thank you for the praise team who have sing the song, Joy, Joy, Joy. You know, all of this week we have been studying in at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, 
During our prayer time this week, we focused on the fruit of the Spirit. And one of the uh, fruit of the Spirit was love, joy. So we have been talking about joy and peace. That's why the songs are so beautiful. So be joyful and smile. Go get your basket and collect your offering. God bless you. Amen. If you care to turn with me to the scripture reading, it's Luke 24, verses 36 to 39. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. 